The pedestrian streets that define this city weren't initially conceived for a car-free way of life. Take Strohe Street, for example. It stretches over more than a kilometer through the heart of Copenhagen. It's actually one of the world's longest pedestrian streets. It was flooded with cars until a two-year pilot project to pedestrianize it started in 1962. It was a massive success and Copenhagen never looked back. The street has been closed to cars ever since and the pedestrian street network in the city center has expanded exponentially. Initially met with a no cars means no business attitude, it has become the busiest shopping street in the city. I sat on this street for one year, every Tuesday and every Saturday, to see how the rhythm of the city was. Then we started for the very first city in the world to have documentation about how people use the city. And that humanistic approach has had a major influence on the planning of Copenhagen. And that's one of the reasons why Copenhagen is referred to as one of the most livable cities in the world. It would be inconceivable to create an episode of this series about Copenhagen without spending time with Jan Gale. His vision and his impact on the city are key to its successes. But what makes him a true urban hero is the influence he has had on people around the world, pushing them to rethink cities on a human scale. Moscow, San Francisco, Sao Paulo, Istanbul, Mexico City, Melbourne. His fingerprints are on major transformations all over the planet. Oh, and the pedestrianization of Times Square in New York? Yep, that was him too. What is wonderful about a city like Copenhagen is we have many different types of pedestrian areas and also semi-pedestrian areas. They have improved the pedestrian situation continuously for more than 50 years. The first 20 years was about inviting people to walk by making pedestrian streets and pedestrian priority streets. Then came the period where people wanted to sit and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that was when the squares were cleaned of parking cars and when we started to use the public spaces for cultural events. Then comes the third period where we are now, when the new spaces are very much geared towards being active you should make cities so that you invite people to walk and bike as much as possible. They live seven years longer. Yeah. They will have a much better life. And we know that if you invite people to drive cars by making more roads, you get more traffic. If you make nice places, they come, they use them. That's what we want. We are a walking animal, yeah. a social walking animal. Yeah. What about gentrification? This seems to be one of the greatest challenges that we're facing. How does the human scale tackle that? Many people would say that because we made Copenhagen so nice, um, all the prices, the market has made the prices go up and then the poorer people have been pushed further out, which is completely correct. But I will not accept that as planners and urban designers, we shall make the city as bad we can so that the rich people will go away <laughs> okay. and the poor sorts can come back. There are two things we can do. One is make many more places good so that everybody can live in some places which are very nice. And the other thing is that this kind of gentrification problem with the market prices going up, that has to be solved politically. Just at this moment, Copenhagen is not so good at it and it's dropped from number one in the livability rating to number six for that very reason. Mm -hmm. So we will have to do something with uh, the, the prices of housing and make sure that they are affordable. That's very important to have a lively and interesting city that you have a good mixture. And the city is actively working to solve this problem. In 2015, the national government gave municipalities the right to impose that 25% of all new building projects be built as affordable housing. Copenhagen, of course, seized the opportunity and made it an official rule. But even that isn't enough. Studies show that from 2013 to 2017, the average price of a home increased by more than 35%. While only 30% of the housing in the city is owner-occupied, 
the national average is 60%, the rising housing market puts enormous pressure on rental prices. 